Bang! Another hit on Jupiter. Hmm, let's see. Gas giant, the largest planet in the solar system, 318 times bigger than the Earth, two and a half times bigger than the rest of the planets in the solar system put together. One more interesting thing. If it got any bigger, it would actually become smaller. You see, with more mass, the planet would be denser. That would cause Jupiter to start pulling in on itself. Scientists say Jupiter could have four times greater mass, but still keep the same size. It takes 10 hours to make a full rotation on its axis. It's the fastest spinning planet in our solar system and gets hit by so many space objects all the time. This was discovered by amateur astronomers observing Jupiter and saw some unusual flash at the planet's surface. Impact events cause flashes like that, and for some reason, Jupiter gets more impacts than other planets. In 1994, astronomers discovered Shoemaker-Levy 9, a comet that broke apart and collided with the gas giant. The original comet was approximately the size of one that erased the dinosaurs. However, this asteroid fell apart into more than 20 fragments. They darkened the planet's surface, and it remained like that for months. Fifteen years later, in 2009, astronomers saw a black spot on Jupiter the size of Earth. It was the result of an asteroid around 650 to 1650 feet in length. The biggest asteroid recorded on Earth hit the area of Tunguska, Russia in 1908. This caused a massive explosion, even though no one ever found a crater. So why is Jupiter the target for so many space objects? Asteroids and comets that pass by Earth and Jupiter go almost at the same speed. The number density of the space object that may interact is almost the same too. But the cross-section of what they might hit is very different. Jupiter has 11 times the diameter of our planet, which means it has around 125 times the cross-section. The more massive some planet is, the stronger its gravitational attraction. So it will entice some space objects drifting by. Our gravitational field is weaker than Jupiter's. If some object passes near us moving at a speed of 22,300 miles per hour or less, our gravitation will attract it. Asteroids and comets usually move at bigger speeds. Jupiter attracts most of the comets and asteroids passing by. If our planet was hit by such big objects as frequently as Jupiter, we'd have extinction like with dinosaurs thousands of times more often. In 2020, scientists found there was an unusual asteroid in the orbit of Venus, the first one there. The size of a small mountain and rich in minerals we can find in Earth's deep rocks. They even think it could be a clue to a bigger set of asteroids created when our solar system was forming. That's not the only mystery around Venus. The planet has insanely violent winds that drive clouds and storms around the planet at speeds greater than 220 miles per hour. That's 60 times faster than Venus itself rotates. Also, scientists are still not sure what happened with its oceans. They believe since the planet is so close to the sun, the water evaporated and went into the atmosphere as steam. It trapped heat coming from the sun, heat that would have vaporized more and more water over time. Venus probably had an environment like on Earth, but a very long time ago. The theory says many comets and asteroids were slamming into Venus. Billions of the planet's pieces were flying all around. Some may have even crashed into Earth's moon. Pieces that slammed into our planet are probably buried very deep, since we have greater geological activity than the moon. Uranus also had a collision, but a more serious one than asteroids. The rest of the planets in our solar system mostly have an axis of rotation that kind of points up from the elliptical plane. Uranus is tilted, lying on the side. So a season there lasts 42 years, when either its south or the north pole is pointed at the sun. Most of the planets also rotate counterclockwise when you see them from above our solar system. Venus does the opposite, which means maybe it was kicked off axis a long time ago. Uranus may have collided with the other space body millions of years ago. When our solar system was still very young, the orbital configuration of Saturn and Jupiter may have crossed. Their gravitational forces kind of created orbital momentum and transferred it to Uranus. That knocked it off axis. Millions of asteroids orbit the Sun, and not so many pass by Earth from time to time so we don't have some dangerous space bodies coming toward us. The plan is to visit Mars in the 2030s, and scientists hope Mars won't be a target of some bigger space bodies. New craters are formed on the red planet every 1-2 to two days. They can be 13 feet across, which means they could have been formed by objects that are the size of a soccer ball. 
Since the atmosphere there is thinner than ours, smaller bodies can enter easier. Most of the Martian north is smooth lowlands. The south is higher, full of craters, and the planet's interior has a surprising amount of rare metals. The theory says this is because a big celestial body collided with Mars and tore away a part of its northern half. Debris from that asteroid circled the planet and then mixed into two small moons that orbit Mars. We also have some Mars rocks on Earth, found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and some other places across the globe. Some of these rocks have gas that's chemically the same as the atmosphere on Mars. Rocks probably came due to a big explosion that happened when some larger asteroid or meteor that was ejected from Mars and landed on our planet. Mercury also has a thin atmosphere, so there are many smaller strikes there. Imagine waking up, going to your window, and see there are micrometeor showers every morning, which is something that happens on Mercury. This strange weather pattern shapes its atmosphere, called an exosphere. Mercury is so dense, its heavy iron core accounts for two-thirds of its total mass. Scientists think it could have been bigger in the past, but many collisions got the surface sort of scraped off. It's been constantly bombarded by rocks from space that left marks with craters. Planes on its surface seem to have been created because of volcanic lava spilling over the surface and then dried smooth. Many craters are filled with such a material, which means there's one more thing that rocked Mercury's world – volcanoes. There's an unusual group of asteroids discovered near Neptune. Wide range in sizes, from big metropolitan areas to tiny pebbles. They are thought to come from an asteroid group called the Kuiper Belt. It makes a ring well beyond Neptune. But these new asteroids have different colors than the Kuiper Belt. They're so far away from the Sun, their surface was supposed to stay almost pristine. But they have a similar color to those sun-baked asteroids around Jupiter. Like the rest of the planets, Neptune gets heat from the Sun. But there's something mysterious inside the planet that makes it generate more heat than it gets. This affects its weather, and Neptune has the weirdest weather in the whole solar system. Massive storms, insanely high winds, cirrus-like clouds that rapidly change all the time. There are dark spots in its atmosphere. They come and go. We receive a thousand times more sunlight than Neptune. Gas giants like Saturn and Jupiter can protect our planet from asteroids. Without them, the big impacts that created enough debris to form both moons and other planets would happen more often. There's a huge asteroid going around Saturn, which could be a potential flyby by 2031, more than 10 times bigger than the asteroid that erased the dinosaurs. Titan, one of the moons orbiting Saturn, 80% more massive than our moon, is actually the only moon in our solar system that has an atmosphere. It's one and a half times thicker than ours and consists mainly of nitrogen, like our atmosphere. No one knows where all that nitrogen came from. However, unlike Saturn and most of the other places in our solar system, its moon has a real potential to host life. Uh-oh, hurricane alert! Everyone's hiding! The speed of the wind outside is more than 75 miles per hour. Seems like a lot. But this storm is moving at 400 miles per hour. Wait, do such speeds exist? Yep, but to see a storm that fast, you'll have to travel to Jupiter. So let the journey begin. The planet is huge. Almost 1,300 Earths could fit into this gas giant. It's also incredibly hot, with the temperatures reaching about 43,000 degrees Fahrenheit at the planet's core. Unfortunately, you can't land on Jupiter's surface because, well, being a gas giant, it doesn't have any solid surface. But you can go deeper into Jupiter's atmosphere. Look at these thick brown, yellow, red, and white clouds passing by. They're what make the planet look colorful and kind of striped. If you continue descending toward the center of the planet, you'll see its atmosphere, mostly made up of hydrogen and helium gas, becoming liquid. It happens because of immense atmospheric pressure. The planet's core itself is a mysterious object. Scientists still haven't figured out whether it's a molten ball of thick liquid or a solid rock 14 to 18 times the mass of Earth. Anyway, exploring Jupiter isn't the main goal of your trip. No, you've arrived here to see the Great Red Spot. It's an enormous storm raging in the southern hemisphere of the gas giant. Its top parts are towering more than 5 miles above the tops of the surrounding clouds. The storm is 1.3 times wider than our planet. 
In 2017, NASA's Juno space probe managed to collect lots of data about the red spot. And it turned out that this monster of a storm goes more than 200 miles down into the planet's atmosphere. That's 30 to 100 times deeper than any ocean on Earth. But these measurements are most likely imprecise, and the storm's true roots can be reaching even deeper. The Great Red Spot is colder than the rest of the atmosphere. And keep in mind that Jupiter's temperatures are minus 234 degrees Fahrenheit in the upper cloud layers. On the other hand, the closer to the core, the hotter it gets. Mysteriously, the highest temperatures ever recorded on the gas giant occurred in the atmosphere right above the Great Red Spot. There, the heat reached 2,400 degrees. This temperature is higher than that of lava on our planet. Astronomers believe that the turbulence caused by the storm might produce gravitational and sound waves that can be responsible for the superheating. But the storm itself is warmer at the bottom than at the top. People have been watching the moving vortex on Jupiter for more than 150 years. Some time ago, astronomers predicted that it would gradually slow down and become smaller or disappear entirely. But that turned out not to be the case. After having analyzed all the data received with the help of the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers were baffled to discover that the winds at the outer boundaries of the storm had actually picked up speed. The change in the wind speed is no more than 1.5 miles per hour during one Earth year. It's a tiny change, but however small the difference is, it still means a lot. The wind speed at the edges of the storm can reach a mind-boggling 400 miles per hour. That's faster than Earth's tornadoes. At the same time, if you found yourself at the center of the Great Red Spot, you wouldn't be too impressed. The winds there move way more slowly. Scientists faced lots of challenges when they were trying to understand the mystery that was the Great Red Spot. It's unclear what fuels the storm. Can it be the nature of the storm's home planet? Since it's a gas giant, Jupiter doesn't have any solid ground, so there's no friction which might be the only thing that could make the storm weaken. The hot gases in the planet's atmosphere are always moving, rising, falling, swirling. Just like on our home planet, where cooler and warmer air mix and merge into one another, forming giant circling storms. Astronomers think that once, several enormous storms could have come together and created the Great Red Spot. And now, it keeps going by constantly drawing cool gases from below and hot gases from above. Plus, the storm might be absorbing other smaller vortices. This makes the Great Red Spot even more powerful. Unfortunately, thick clouds on Jupiter don't allow astronomers to see what's going on in the planet's lower atmosphere. Scientists have been speculating on what may hide beneath the Great Red Spot for decades. Is it a massive volcano? Eh, unlikely. Jupiter is mostly made up of gases, and it doesn't have a crust that could crack, letting lava escape from the planet's interior. There are also a few theories explaining why the storm has its trademark color. It varies from whitish and pale salmon to bright orange and brick red. Some scientists believe the answer lies deep below the Great Red Spot, closer to the planet's surface. A colorless layer of gas might be reacting to the UV radiation coming from the sun. This is probably what gives the storm its red color. But so far, it's just a theory. Hey, your guess is as good as mine, huh? Jupiter isn't the only planet that can boast having a giant storm. Another one, as wide as our home planet, rages on Saturn. It's called the Great White Spot. How clever! The storm has a tail of white clouds encircling the entire planet. It occurs every 30 years or so. The storm indeed starts as a spot, but then it starts stretching and stretching. Astronomers have figured out that the Great White Spot is actually a huge system of thunderstorms. At the top of the storm, lightning can flash more than 10 times per second. But the main mystery about the Great White Spot is where it gets its energy from. Some scientists think it may be powered by the sun. Others argue that the storm's cloud pattern only makes sense if there's an internal source of heat that can power the winds. Anyway, severe storms on different planets of the solar system aren't the only space mystery that makes astronomers scratch their heads. Let's move to Pluto, the largest known dwarf planet in the solar system, and explore its atmosphere. 
It rises really high above the surface of the planet and has more than 20 layers, all of them freezing cold and extremely condensed. By the way, our moon also has some sort of an atmosphere. Called an exosphere, it consists of helium, neon, and argon. It's 10 trillion times less dense than Earth's atmosphere. While traveling through space, watch out for black holes! Woo! A black hole is a place where gravity is so strong that even light can't get out. But black holes can sometimes behave like a massive galactic volcano. From time to time, they flare up. Sounds like me. But instead of spewing lava, they produce enormous amounts of energy. And this phenomenon leaves gaping holes in the surrounding material and gas. A short while ago, scientists discovered one of the largest craters in the universe. Radio and X-ray telescopes detected a supermassive black hole that threw a temper tantrum many, many years ago. It happened in a galaxy cluster about 390 million light-years away from Earth. The crater this event left behind could fit 15 Milky Way galaxies. Yeah, I can't get my head around that either. During your space voyage, think twice before landing on unknown planets. Otherwise, you may end up in a place like K2-141b. That's a planet outside of our solar system. At first glance, it's not that different from Earth. It has liquid oceans that evaporate, form clouds, condense, and get back to the surface as rain. But instead of water, it rains rocks. The surface of this exoplanet is covered with lava seas dozens of miles deep. The temperatures on the K2-141b reach 5,000 degrees during the day. That's toasty enough for the magma in the oceans to vaporize into the atmosphere. Then, supersonic winds, which can move at the speed of 1 mile per second, carry this rock vapor into the planet's night side. The vaporized magma cools down, becomes liquid again, and falls as a rocky rain. Uh Uh-uh, not a vacation spot. Too hot. I'll pass. Scientists keep finding new planets they call super-Earths. It's a class of more massive planets than Earth, but way lighter than ice giants such as Uranus and Neptune. Super-Earths can be made of rock, gas, or a combination of these two. They are often twice or even up to 10 times bigger than the Earth. They're interesting to study, but kind of too far away from us. They're pretty common outside of our solar system, together with other interesting planets like mini Neptunes. Those can also be gas dwarfs, ice giants, or huge rocky bodies. But again, we don't have anything like that. But something we do have that those other solar systems don't? Jupiter. It's the biggest and heaviest object that orbits our sun. This king of planets possesses a powerful force to dominate our solar system. Jupiter is notorious for eating planets. A protoplanet slammed into it about 4.5 billion years ago, when Jupiter was still a young planet in its early stages. This protoplanet was 10 times heavier than Earth and was made of ice and rock. The collision was huge. Jupiter's core broke apart and helium and hydrogen mixed with denser materials. Through time, the heavy material settled back into the dense core, which is what we see today. And if it swallowed a planet before, it might keep doing it as well. We suspect our solar system used to have many more large planets than it has now. For example, it's kinda empty around Mercury today. Similar areas around many other central stars are definitely more packed with intermediate mass planets, with the size between Earth and Neptune. Our solar system was a chaotic place at its beginnings. Young stars were surrounded by swirling disks of dust and gas, and planets would form out of that debris, something like trees when they're springing up from the ground. Small rocky planets would form in the strong heat and light close to stars, while gas giants would form farther out, where temperatures were lower, which means they could preserve more gassy materials. And even though planets in our solar system seem pretty stable and peaceful today, following their orbit, they weren't that calm before. Some planets didn't have a circular orbit. They had oblong, more eccentric paths. It took them swinging first toward their stars and then farther away. It was like they had been thrown off kilter by the gravity of other planets on their way. There's something called the Grand Tack Theory. It explains things happening in the first few million years when our solar system was forming. At some point, Jupiter, one of the key players here, may have been pulled in closer by our central star. After that, 
it went back and took a huge cloud of debris. It was like a sailboat when it tacks around a buoy. This kind of messed with planets that were in the process of formation. After Saturn was fully formed, our close neighbors in the solar system cleared out a little. But if the idea about Grand Tack is correct, Jupiter had grabbed everything in its way, and its migrations had caused more collisions in this area. Jupiter might have delivered some of the water that now fills the oceans we have on our planet. It shepherds plenty of asteroids. From time to time, it sends some whizzing into interstellar space or amongst the planets in our solar system. It may have even taken part in the dinosaur extinction 66 million years ago. When the huge space rock hit the Earth, it left a crater off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. It all caused earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis that made a huge impact on all animal and plant life on Earth. No one knows where it came from. We're not even sure if it was an asteroid or a comet. One theory says it may have been a comet that came from the Oort cloud, which is made of icy debris and is located somewhere at the edge of our solar system. It could have been bumped off course by Jupiter and its powerful gravitational force. This way, our solar system was like a pinball machine, where Jupiter, the biggest planet, kicks incoming comets into orbits that send them closer to the Sun. When these comets are near the Sun, they can go through strong tidal forces that break them apart and eventually create shrapnel-like pieces of a comet. That event was a point when our mammalian ancestors started to rule. That means without Jupiter, there might not be us either, nor the Earth. It seemed like our biggest planet came swinging in, destroyed older planets, and cleared the way for smaller worlds like ours. Jupiter may have been the reason why we can't find Planet 9 right now. Scientists believe it exists, and they think it could be hiding somewhere beyond Neptune, but not Pluto. There are three zones in our solar system, the inner planets, outer planets, and whatever there is beyond. The mysterious planet could be the size of the Earth or Mars. It swirled among the gas giants before they eventually swept it toward the outer parts of our solar system, or even somewhere into deep space. Jupiter has stripes because of differences in temperature, atmospheric gas, and chemical composition. Scientists used to think the only reason for these different colors was the mighty atmospheric wind and material circulating between layers of the atmosphere. Now we know the light-colored stripes, or so-called zones, show us where the gas rises. When the stripes are dark-colored, they're called belts and can tell us where gas is sinking. Jupiter's moons could also be why the planet is stripy, because they're tugging on its atmospheric convection cells. At the center of Jupiter, there's a dense liquid core made of helium and metallic hydrogen, together with dissolved heavier elements. As we go further from its center, the temperature and pressure inside the planet drop off. That way, the liquid interior gives way to gases from the atmosphere. Again, mostly helium and hydrogen. No one knows how deep this liquid gas boundary lies, but the planet is probably fully liquid a couple of thousand miles under its cloud tops. Jupiter would still be bigger than some other giants, like Saturn, if we could strip its gases. Jupiter is sometimes even called a failed star, although that's not quite correct. It's mostly made of hydrogen, like regular stars, but it's still not massive enough to start thermonuclear reactions in its core, which would eventually turn it into a real star. In theory, every object could be turned into a star if you only add enough matter to it. If there's enough mass, the temperature and internal pressure will increase and start thermonuclear reactions. So, to turn Jupiter into a star, such as the Sun, you'd have to make it 1,000 times more massive. But, to form a cooler red dwarf, you'd only need 80 Jupiter masses more. That way, Jupiter won't spontaneously become a new star of our solar system. But if many space objects with similar mass collide with it, or in other words, if Jupiter eats them, then maybe, <laughs> you never know. But in theory, if it could become a massive star, it would have stopped other planets from forming in stable orbits. It would have also increased the radiation that the surface of those planets get, which is why it would be really hard for life to develop in our solar system. Jupiter is the planet that spins the fastest in our solar system. It only needs 10 hours to make a full rotation on its axis. Even though it's huge, more than 300 times bigger than the Earth, 
and 2.5 times more massive than the rest of the planets in our entire solar system together. But if it got more massive, it would shrink. More mass would make Jupiter denser, which means it would begin pulling in on itself. So it could get four times its mass and would still be the same size. 